Everybody say, I pruned if I do and pruned if I don't. My mama was trying to help me bear more fruit. <laughs> the right kind of fruit. Amen. The godly kind of fruit. And guess what? It helped me. From that day on, I started acting different. I never sassed my mom again on chores. Isn't that amazing how that works? Amen. But God's got a plan. Amen. God's got a purpose. God's got dreams. God's got things he wants to bring about in your life. But to get from where you are now to where God wants to take you, there's going to be a whole lot of pruning going on. Everybody say, come on over, Jesus. Whole lot of pruning going on. <laughs> oh, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. If God can use him, I know there's hope for you. <laughs> People, from now until Jesus comes, you're going to be in two seasons. You're going to be going and you'll be living two separate seasons of your life. You're either going to be in a season of being pruned or a season of bearing fruit. Which one are you in right now? Last year, my wife and I went through a, a whole year of being pruned. <laughs> I mean, we weren't in sin, but there were some things that God wanted me to, that God wanted me to draw closer to him because the Lord gave me and my wife a vision back in 1989 when we first got saved that we would have a worldwide ministry, that we would proclaim liberty to the captives all over the world. Amen? And so, amen, God put that in. And then the Lord told me I was going to be a worldwide evangelist and my wife was going to be a teacher. We were, and, we, and we've been taking that. that that's been happening. But, but we still got a lot more places God wants to take us. How many know God's got a lot more he wants to do through you? Everybody, everybody raise your hand and say, God's got a lot more he wants to do to me and through me. Somebody shout amen. And how many people know when God starts speaking about stopping something that he wants you to stop and start doing something he wants you to start doing, it's a good thing. I said, it's a good thing. And because, you know, sometimes we don't want to change. Our flesh likes things just like they are. And God starts shaking us up and says, come on now. I want to draw you closer. There's something I want to do through you. Something I want you to, uh, something I want to take you to a whole another level. If you'll just obey me in this little thing. It may not be a big thing to you. But if God speaks to you about it, it's a big thing to God. Everybody raise your hands. I can. Come on, shout. I can. Do all things through Christ. Which strengthens me. I mean, we know how many know we want to get everything just like we like it and settle down like that, get a little ducks in a row. And the Lord starts dealing with us about stopping doing this and starting doing that. And all of a sudden, your flesh goes, Oh Lord, come on, Jesus, don't make me. Come on, Jesus, I like things just the way they are. Come on, Jesus, don't rock the boat, Lord. Don't rock the boat. Don't rock the boat, Jesus. Rock the boat. Don't tip the boat over. Amen. But if you just go ahead. And let the Lord, amen, have his way with your life, people. Just obey those changes God is dealing with you on. You're going to see great and mighty things. Everybody say, on the other side of my obedience, there is great blessing. My wife and I, when we first started in ministry, we were, we were just so excited to get an open door for ministry. Now, we knew God had called us to a worldwide ministry. But to get from there, where we were, to where we are now, there had to be a whole lot of pruning. Everybody said, come on over, Jesus. A whole lot of pruning going on. <laughs> and so, our first ministry opportunity that God opened up for us, because how many know God knows what you're ready for? If you're faithful in a few things, he'll make you a ruler over much. But our first opportunity that God opened up for us, we became full-time house parents at a home for troubled teenage girls. Now, God had called us to be worldwide ministers. We knew that something we would do, but to get from here to there, there had to be a whole lot of pruning going on. Now, how many want God's perfect plan and purpose for your life to become a reality? Come on. How many want to be able to stand before God and hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant? Everybody raise your hand and say, come on over, Jesus. Whole lot of pruning going on. So here we are. We're full-time house parents at a home for troubled teenage girls. And we knew God put us there. And when we said yes to the opportunity, we didn't really know what we said yes to. We just went to God's will. But there were some things that God had to change in me and Beverly before we got the full-time door to evangelism open to us. 
Amen. Because God doesn't want you to fail. He knows you better than you know yourself. Amen. He puts some good things in you. So when you obey him and allow God to do what he wants to do in you, he is getting you ready for the next step. How many are ready for the next step? Everybody raise your hand shout, I'm moving on up, Lord. You're never too young, never too old. God has a plan for you all the way through your life. There's always more he wants to do through you, but you got to let him, amen, prune you. Everybody raise your hand and say, God, in order for you to do what you want to do to me, i got to let you prune me <laughs> so you can bear more fruit, amen. And so here we are at this trooper, this home of troubled teenage girls, and we had six troubled teenage girls. I want you to say that real slow and think about what you're saying. Everybody say six troubled teenage girls. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of scary thinking about that, isn't it? These girls come from, from I mean, abusive home situations. They've been involved in gangs. I mean, and, and, and when we took this opportunity, I'm thinking, Lord, I'm so glad you put us in this home. We can help these girls. I'm sure they're so glad to be in a place where they can just be loved and cared for. Oh, boy, they had, whoa, well, I was wrong. They, they had some baggies. They had some issues. And we went in there to just love them and help them. And the first three days we was there, everything was just great. I mean, they, we had a big party. They welcomed us in, and, and they had a big cake and welcomed her in Beverly. And they were so glad we were the house parents, and we were glad that God opened the door for us. And, and the first three days was just great. But on that fourth day, they started breaking all the rules. They started stealing clothes from each other, stealing makeup, stealing food out of the kitchen. I mean, fighting, arguing, fussing among themselves. And, you know, I'm a nice guy, folks. But that day, I lost my joy, joy, joy. I hate to admit it. I mean, they got, they got this, this knockdown, drag out fight. And I walk in there, and I said, girl, stop it. Get on that couch and shut up and sit down. Boy, they, they all got all scared and ran over there and they sat down real, just like this, you know. I had a little wiener dog, Mabry. He was on the very end doing the same thing, just going. And I said, girls, you know what? We're here to help you. We're here to be a blessing to you. But you're breaking all the rules. We're trying to, be, we're trying to help you and, and help you find peace and joy, help you find the Lord. I said, you know what you girls need? What you girls really need is a good whooping. You just need a good whooping is what you need. And they said, you can't whoop us. If you whoop us, you'll lose your job. I said, I might lose my job, but I'll whoop you first. <laughs> I tried to put a scare in them, man. I wasn't going to do it, but I tried to put a scare in those kids and make them act right. And I said, you know, you stay right there. I'm going to be right back. So I went outside. It was a nice summer evening, big full moon. I walked out and said, Lord, this is a joke, right? You don't really want me to stay here in this home for trouble with teenage girls. Lord, I am a, a worldwide evangelist. You told me in 89 I was going to be a go around the world and preach the gospel. He said, go back in there. And preach to the girls. That's your first preaching assignment is preach to the girls. Have a revival in the New Life House girls' home. Uh, folks, I didn't want to hear that. I wanted to leave. I wanted God to say, sure, I just want to see if you take the job. Now I'm releasing you to go around the world. Well, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to go around the world. There had to be some pruning going on. Everybody raise your hand and say, come on over, Jesus. Everybody raise your hand and say, come on over, Jesus. Whole lot of pruning going on. <laughs> Amen. And so, you know what? I said, Lord, I know this is what you want me to do. I, I my flesh doesn't want to do it, but I'm going to go in there and I'm going to, I'm going to do just what you told me to do. And when I did that, I felt something cut off me. I, it's like God, just God, the gardener. If I say my father, God is the gardener. So, you know, he came and cut that selfishness off of me. And as soon as I made up my mind, I was going to go back there. I felt God take that off of me. And I, and I began to feel compassion and love that I'd never felt before. I mean, I love people, but I begin to feel sorry. And I begin to see those girls through a different eye. I begin to see them through the eyes of Jesus and how they've been abused and all the things they've gone through to make them act that way. Going from home to home, not having a real dad or a mom. And I begin to, I begin to have the heart of God and feel God in that. So I went back in there. I said, girls, now tomorrow morning we're going to have breakfast, 7.30. I want you at the table. I want your rooms clean. And then we're going to eat breakfast. And then we're going to pray and read the Bible together. They said, you can't make us pray and you can't make us read the Bible. I said, no, but you're going to listen to me anyway. So go to bed. I said, I had to, I had to, I had to repent three or four times, folks. 
Anyway, they went to bed. The next morning, they got up at 7.30, and they, had, they were dressed. They were clean, they had the rooms clean, and they sat down there at the little breakfast table, and my wife served breakfast, and then we had Bibles for them to read. And guess what? They didn't want those Bibles. I said, that's okay. I'm going to read the Word anyway. So I began to read.